the face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man the dust of the ground, body, breathed into his nostril the breath of life, spirit, and man became a living soul, body, soul, spirit. And the Lord God formed man the dust of the ground, so his name is mud. The, the elements that are in the ground are in man, the elements that are in man are in the ground, and they're the identical elements. And the Lord God formed man the dust of the ground, and breathed his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I teach that a baby is not a living soul until it breathes. I'm considered a great heretic for teaching that. But then again, if a man goes by the King James Bible, he's bound to be a heretic these days. <laughs> and so I don't teach that abortion is a murder like the brethren do, and for that uh, reason I'm considered a heretic for some of the brethren. But I'm an old dog. I've been around a long time. You know what I've observed? I've observed that the uh, Pharisees always weren't about matters of sex. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Master, there was a certain man that died and left a wife, and his brother married her. It's a strange kind of thing. Uh, some of the brethren are kind of, I think they're sex obsessional neurotics, and they sound all their Bible teaching they get on the sex, they go and just go batty as a floozy man. They don't know where they're at. I don't know what it is. It must be kind of a form of Phariseeism. Uh, some of my brethren get so hung up or... Uh, hung off something on short skirts that they get so obsessed with that thing that they spend half the ministry is talking about how women look. I figure if I wouldn't have that much to talk about unless you've been doing a lot of looking. I tell you, if all I could find in the Bible was short skirts, I'd have a pretty sorry looking Bible to read, brother. And somebody says, well, are you for or against? You know, I know all that stuff. I mean, I've been around how things go. You ought, to, you ought to just try sometime to do the work I do in these Christian camps. I've seen Christian camps blow up arguing about whether to wear slacks and dresses. And some of these fundamentalists, they get so hung up on don't, 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 that they don't do nothing. Yeah. Get a big old Christian camp and the girls wear slacks and no more, no dresses, dresses. All right, the next year, Captain, and the dresses come in. What are they? They're all a foot above the knees. See? Then you say, well, the dresses have to be below the knee. They come below the knee. Like I said, there's a thin mosquito that can fly throughout busting a wing. I mean, if a girl isn't right, she'll dress to attract attention, brother. Just, you just bet your bottom dollar. If you have to wear a gunny sack, she'll find some way to fix the thing up. And the thing is about those kind of things, you don't want to get, you don't want to get hung up on those things. Now, some of the brethren get so hung up on this thing, you know, abortion is murder, abortion is murder. They show you pictures. Well, they're trying to prove, they're trying to prove the thing looks like a person, it is a person. That's what Darwin taught. You've got to watch that business. You can take an embryo of an animal and prove it looks like an embryo of a person. That doesn't make it a person. You've got to watch that business. You go around and start to prove that thing is a person before that thing is born, then you've got that matter of uh, salvation, and the first thing you know would be up there at the Catholic hospital dumping water on them so they don't go to limbo. You've got to watch that kind of stuff. Now, I'll grant you the child is an organism. I'll grant you that. But a lot of organisms. I'll grant you the child may be alive in the sense of animal life. I'll grant you that. I'll grant you it's an embryo. I'll grant you that. But if you're talking about a living soul, see, I read my Bible, there's no living soul there till the Lord breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Amen. And when you smack that baby and that baby goes, Ugh, yeah, you can't blame a kid for yelling. Look what he's coming into. <laughs> And when that kid yells, as far as I'm concerned, then they're on living soul. Now, if you ever start teaching the other, and maybe some of you fellows subscribe that way, you're going to have some real problems. When all those uh, Indians and Hindus came into Bangladesh and Pakistan and raped about 2,000 women, left them with about 800 illegitimate children, the good Catholic nuns, in order to increase the membership in the local church, decided that it would be a terrible sin to have any abortion. So the will of God for 800 women who were abused against their will to bear children for the Roman Catholic Church. I don't believe it. Amen. Then you get talking like this and folks say, when you get talking like this, then the libertines say, well, then the abortion's all right, therefore, and take advantage of it, you see. Uh, I won't compromise the truth whether you take advantage of it or whether you don't. 
I mean, if somebody takes advantage of the truth I just gave, that lies between them and the Lord. But I feel the truth is the truth, no matter what you do with it. Jack Kyle, some of the brethren, are trying to give Jesus Christ a haircut so they can keep the standards up in their schools. They're afraid if their students find out Jesus Christ had long hair, that they'll take advantage of it. The truth is the truth, whether you take advantage of it or not. Say hey. 